Hello everyone, we're going to begin module 2, Adobe Photoshop, where we start to include raster images into our workflow. All of module 1 was using Illustrator to create vector images, right? Images that are made of paths that can be increased, decreased at any size and still retain the information. Now we're going to be working in Photoshop that uses raster imagery that uses a pixel that now we have an endless possibility of colors and, and value, but we have to be careful with how we use it. We're going to continue our gig poster uh, for this assignment and mock it up to present. So I'm going to actually just mock up our gig poster onto this three-dimensional like surface. It's really simple. There's some mock-ups out there that you can get really involved. Um, with but because we're learning Photoshop we'll keep it simple. Uh, so I'll just kind of introduce you to how I use Illustrator and Photoshop together. Now everything in Illustrator in terms of using the pen tool and everything I stick with Illustrator right but you can build things in Photoshop from that. There you'll see in the toolbar here they do have brushes, pencil tools, a little bit more drawing tools in here than you have in Illustrator. But again, that can happen in Illustrator. What I like to do in Photoshop is add photographic quality to some of my work. So I'll show you something I just finished in Illustrator that it's all vectors, something for uh, a commission piece where I built all these vectors but it looked very flat I wanted to give it a little bit of texture uh, to the whole piece so what I did was I brought it into Photoshop and I applied some just basic surface textures and some filters to it to make it look a little bit more handmade so a lot of times that's what I'll, I'll do with Illustrator and Photoshop is I'll build a lot of the pieces in Illustrator, bring them on over to Photoshop, either mock them up or um, make them look more realistic, more three-dimensional. So that's what we're going to do today. So let's begin. A uh, brief overview of the interface. We still have our tools here. The tools have changed, and don't worry, I will go over them. We'll be using the Layers panel to the right here a lot more than in Illustrator. You, you have to rely on the Layers panel in Photoshop. Up top we have basic uh, editing items depending on what is selected. So if we have something like the Clone Stamper tool selected, you'll notice that the inputs will change. And then up here, we'll also be working in photo editing so you can see here in image adjustments you have ways to adjust a photo now that we didn't have in Illustrator as well as editing and layer options and filter which we'll discuss in the next few weeks. We're going to go back to Illustrator and pull up our image so I'm going to go and grab that poster I did. Um, so this is you're going to grab your poster um, from Illustrator. Now you can copy and paste and I've done that but I'm going to show you just an easy way to save it as a Photoshop file already. So you'll go to File, Export, not Save As, Export As and you'll scroll down to Photoshop PSD. That's probably not selected but Photoshop PSD and you'll check Use Artboards. And I'm just going to export it so I'm going to keep it in CMYK and here you can actually adjust your resolution. Um, this is going to stay screen so I'm going to keep it at medium. If I wanted to actually edit my layers I could actually have it save all these as layers. Um, but I'm only mocking this up so I just have to hit flat image, hit OK. I'm going to let that save. All right, so I've gone ahead and opened up the template. It's a flat JPEG image. 
we're going to add our poster to it and kind of customize it so it looks a little three-dimensional. What we're going to do is actually pull this rectangle out and there's a few ways you can do it. You can use the marquee tool to grab it and copy it and paste it or you can create a new shape. So I'll show you both. So in Photoshop you'll be using layers a lot for each thing you want to make you want to make sure you're in the right layer so I'll say paper layer and then I'm gonna use my guides just like in Illustrator you'll click and drag them if you don't see your rulers here you'll go to ruler make sure that's checked and then I'm gonna go ahead and line up this just so I know exactly what I'm gonna cut out or create like that and then I can do one of two things I can pull the JPEG image so this using the rectangular marquee tool and it'll automatically connect with my guides click and drag and then I'm gonna hit copy with my background layer checked copy paste you'll see it, it just creates a new layer from that or you can paste it into the layer like so. I've not cut it, so now I've just created a new element. Now if I wanted to just build the shape, I could go ahead and go to the rectangle tool, just like in Illustrator, and build it like that. And this allows me to edit it and create a shape. With this option open, I'm, I, I want to do some things to it, but let me import my image in now and see it all together. So I'm going to go to File. I'm going to go to Place Embedded. It's going to actually house the image in the file. And then I'm going to go to my poster, Place. And you'll see that I can actually scale it before clicking. If you accidentally click it, just go to edit free transform and that will allow us to transform it however we need you'll click hold shift to drag and place your image like so the template is set for 11 by 14 image so if your image isn't the right size you'll need to check that it is 11 by 14 this stage I want to be extra careful make sure I did scale it to be the right size. There we go. And so I've placed my image in, but I want to make my paper look a little more three dimensional. So I'm going to unsee this. I'm going to click that to hide it. And then I'm going to double click my paper. You'll notice that you pull up the layer style panel. This allows you to mess around, mess around with the shape. So I can actually do a color overlay. So say I wanted to change the color of my paper, which I might. Maybe I'll make it a nice cream color paper. And I might want to make it more three-dimensional. So I'll go to bevel and emboss. And you'll see it's automatically putting this really thick bevel. It looks kind of like a pillow, so I need to pull that down. Maybe I'll go to outer bevel, eh, inner bevel. I'm just going to make that much smaller in depth and in size. See how it's decreasing. And so you can play around with these settings to your liking. We have a pillow emboss.
Now I can hit my image and I can put it over the top. Now, because there were shapes, I could either decide that I could keep the white to, to give some contrast, or I can go ahead and mess with the layer style up here. Go to, up here you'll see the word normal. You can actually apply a layer technique to it that will allow it to multiply, so it'll give it some transparency. You can mess around with all of these. Um, that give you great cool effects for surface treatment. So again, go ahead and play around with that too to find your liking. I might double click this. If I wanted to have a dark piece of paper I could. So now you can start to mess around with the, the paper that this is going on. Um, lighter, I could change the colors. You know, and start to give it some some an interesting look. I can even mess around with the entire color of this, but because it's a big shape, all it's going to do is add a color overlay to that. Now, if you want to change the colors in your design, it's something I do a lot. Um, say I'm getting I'm stuck on an image and I don't know what colors I should do so like this one I definitely did it with this one when I imported it is I, I tweak the colors by going here going to image adjustments and going to in this option you have color balance hue saturation either one of those two will allow you to actually adjust all your color relationships together based on the values and it just changes the hue so it's a great way to you know, see a new color scheme that you're like, wow, that's much, that's probably stronger than what I had. So feel free to play with that and change your image. Um, here it won't work so much because it's a black and white image, but I'll show you. It might work better for color balance. See, I can start to manipulate the top color. And I can mess around and I can lighten up the image as well to help that. So start messing around with your image for this. Um, but not so much that you lose the integrity of your design. Um, but explore. So wrapping up, I'm going to go back to a different color. I'm going to take this out. I don't want it to, I want it to sit on top. But I want it to be slightly translucent. Yeah, there we go. So I, you can adjust your layer and, and let it kind of blend into the paper more by adjusting the opacity up here. So this is with full opacity. I might knock it back. And that's great to know for mock-ups when you need things to slightly overlay. You can either go to your tool here, hit multiply, or you can sh slightly change the opacity. And there we go. So now I have my image. Um, since there's a lot of white space, you could mess around with some of the white space and go back to your Illustrator file and pull imagery. Uh, in this case, I might just place the image again. So I'm going to File, Place Embedded, place this image again, make it bigger. So by holding Shift and increasing it, What I might do is pull it back here and make it super translucent just to ha give it like, you know, a cool look without being too distracting. You could decide to do that or not. It might work, might not work. I might even drop the opacity a lot more just so it's, yeah. Just to give it like a texture back there, but sometimes it can be too much where you need to just showcase your work. 
right? It's about showcasing the, the success of the design. And not letting anything else distract. So, yeah, I feel I feel good about that. Feel like it's presented well. Um, I'm gonna go ahead now. I can just go to File, Save As, and you're gonna be saving it as is it as a JPEG, a small JPEG. So you'll put your first name, last name, module two, mockup. And save it. It's going to ask you how big. I don't think you need to go maximum. Go high. Um, and we'll look at some file. The file size once it's been saved. Your file should not be any bigger than a few megabytes. Uh, anything bigger than 20 megabytes is a huge file. And is hard to send via email. So make sure. Right. Yep. I have a nice size. Kilobytes. It's a good size image. And there you go. Then I'll go ahead and I'll upload this and you've completed the first assignment, very easy assignment, just to get to know the interface a little bit. And then we'll start creating some new stuff next week. All right, thank you.